Marvelous Ni Hao, friends and loved ones, how are you today? And welcome to my brand new apartment here in Beijing, China. If you told me I was going to be celebrating the third anniversary of my channel in China, I'd have thought you were crazy. But I can now say, literally and figuratively, I've come a long way. As always, I had a bit of a debate over what game to cover for my anniversary special. We talked about Glover, then we talked about WWF Warzone, then we talked about the Glover 2 beta. Well, I've decided we're gonna keep this pattern going by tackling, grappling, and Irish whipping another wrestling game. Folks at home today, we're gonna be talking about SmackDown vs. Raw. This is usually when I'd hold up a copy of the game, but I recorded all the footage before I left America, so I didn't feel the need to bring it with me. SmackDown vs. Raw has all the wrestling goodness you'd want from a game, but this is the first game I really remember having an actual story mode. One where you could create your own wrestler and have them just interact and be involved in real WWE action and drama as you fight for titles and glory. And I know just who to make. Folks at home, behold, Glover. <laughs> yeah, kinda. So when you make your wrestler, you're gonna wanna choose between SmackDown or Raw. Since this is the most important decision that will guide us through the entire course of the game, I'll be making my choice very, very carefully. Screw it. I'm just gonna say it was heads. The main difference between the two basically just boils down to what wrestlers you'll be interacting with. Glover will be on the SmackDown side for no other reason than it has the word smack in it. SmackDown vs. Raw's story mode is broken up into eight months leading up to major wrestling events such as Judgment Day, SummerSlam, or Royal Rumble, with each month taking up four weeks. Nine times out of ten, these weeks play out with a story scene, followed by a fight, followed by another scene setting you up for next week. Just like real wrestling! Every star and announcer in the story mode is voiced by real WWE personalities, except for Glover, who doesn't talk, which makes things really weird to watch, but I think I've managed to come up with a compromise thanks to the magic of sound editing. Perfect. And speaking of sound, I have to take a minute to discuss this game's soundtrack. You know when you pop in a game you played a long time ago and the soundtrack just immediately comes back to you? Well, I'd like to say that's the case with WWE SmackDown vs. Raw's soundtrack, but honestly, it never left me in the first place. I've had every song from this game stuck in my head for 14 years. Go look up the sick beats of Bottom Line by Swollen Members, and you tell me you won't be tapping your fingers along to that rhythm for the next decade. Seriously, please tell me that. I really want to feel like I'm not alone on this. The first month is all about setting up for Judgment Day, and opens up with Rene Dupree arguing with his manager, Tori Wilson, about how he keeps losing, before Glover steps in. Throughout the game, you'll be able to make clean or heal decisions that can have an impact on the game's story. Like, maybe you'll attack someone backstage, which will make your next match easier, but that might bite you in the butt later. Either way you go, Dupree isn't happy that some hotshot rookie sensation is flirting it up with his manager. See, SmackDown vs. Raw has a huge emphasis on the divas this time around. They're everywhere. On the main menus, in bra and panty matches, and in certain storylines, like this one, the build-up will be about getting the divas manager contract from another wrestler at the main event, with plenty of super awkward PS2 WWE flirting spread throughout. No. No. Tori! What are you doing? Y you can't take Glover into the shower with you! He's machine wash only! So in the weeks leading up to Vengeance, Glover gets into a bit of a beef with Charlie Haas and Bubba Ray Dudley, and gets challenged to a ladder match by one of my favorite wrestlers, Rey Mysterio. Which I lost. But that actually lets me talk about a somewhat neat part of this game. As far as I can tell, in pretty much every event in the game, win or lose, the show must go on. Just like real wrestling! But thanks to Glover impressing Kurt Angle, the main event is a four-man battle royale with Haas, Dudley, and Mysterio. Where at vengeance, Glover will be able to get his... Um... Is there a word that means, like... 
punishment inflicted or retribution exacted for an injury or wrong? So, heading into SummerSlam, we open up the month with another diva recruitment. This time, it's Sable, whom we meet by Glover bursting into her locker room while she's in a towel. But, I mean, she just kind of laughs it off. <laughs> it's funny, because he's sexually harassing her. Which isn't funny. But, honestly, SummerSlam is a pretty slow month as far as story goes. It's just a few normal fights with nothing crazy or special attached to them. But like with Dupree and Tori, Chavo Guerrero isn't too happy with his manager making goo goo eyes at the king of N64 mascot platformers, no matter what critics, fans, or sales numbers may say, and we end up at SummerSlam for a first blood match. Which is great, because throughout this game I have been honing a very specific strategy, which is to knock people down and punch them repeatedly in the face until they bleed. So I guess you could say... This match type fits me like a glove. In the next month, Glover's former rivals Mario and Banjo ambush him after his match and beat him up so badly that he's out of commission until the very next week. Nearly everybody agrees this was stupid and cowardly on their part, including Glover's new best friend, Rocket Robot on Wheels. Uh, I mean, Rey Mysterio and Kurt Angle books us a no-disqualification tag team match at no mercy. With this being a no-DQ match and all, I decided that Glover needed to try a bold new strategy. I call it, beating the ever-loving crap out of the other guy with an endless stream of chairs. I think it paid off pretty well for me. So now that we're over halfway through the story in the month leading up to Survivor Series, the vs. Raw part of SmackDown vs. Raw actually starts to rear its head. The month opens up with another D.Va recruitment. This time, we're trying to get Stacey Keebler to switch from Raw to SmackDown so that she can be our manager. Unfortunately, since she signed with Raw, we're gonna have to earn a spot in a 15-man Royal Rumble between Glover and 14 superstars from Raw that all want Stacey as their manager. Glover's able to earn a spot in this match after beating up Matt Hardy and Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy in a one-on-two tag match, which proves very difficult since, as we all know, Drax can make himself invisible. But to the surprise of no one, especially not me, Glover emerges victorious from the 15-man fight and Stacey Keebler is recruited to SmackDown as his manager. And also, there's a really, like, needlessly long lap dance scene that I thought might be less awkward if I put Glover music over it. It's not. Month 6 is all about setting up another Royal Rumble match here at SmackDown. This time with 30 superstars all duking it out. The fights leading up to the match determine your position in the main event. So if Glover keeps winning, he'll get to come out last, increasing his chances of winning the whole shebang. One of the fights I had to do was a three-man fight between Rob Van Dam and Big Show. I figured I'd try and take out Big Show since he'd be the tougher opponent, but I guess... I mean, I guess the game glitched or something, and he spent the vast majority of the fight just standing there, and I just thought that was really funny. Anyway, Glover wins all of his fights, so now it's time for the Royal Rumble, with Glover having earned the coveted 30th contender spot. Here's the problem with that. Yes, being the 30th guy means your odds of winning go up by a lot, but it means you have to watch every other computer fighter go through the whole ordeal. This took 45 minutes! And then I lost! So I had to do it again! Then it took another half an hour! And I lost again! This is not good game making! I know I don't technically have to win this fight to continue with the story mode, but come on! Glover deserves this! What else does he have going for him? Nothing! Now that Glover's won the Royal Rumble, he's all set to have a shot at being the WWE Champion at No Way Out. The current champion may not have a lot of nice things to say about Glover, but our new buddy John Cena certainly does. What? Oh! <laughs> you thought I was gonna do the... <laughs> no, no, no. Ugh, way too easy. So Glover ends up as a special ref- Sorry, it had to be done. 
right before Glover's WWE Championship match at No Way Out, head of Raw, Eric Bischoff, comes down and proposes a wager between SmackDown and Raw. The first ever title unification match between the SmackDown Champion and the Raw Champion, one month from today at WrestleMania 20. Glover naturally ends up winning his fight, becoming the SmackDown WWE Champion, but more importantly, impresses Trish Stratus in the process. However, we won't get a chance to recruit her this playthrough. But now it's here, folks, the final showdown, SmackDown vs. Raw. At the main event, it's been decided that the two champions, Glover and Kane, will be competing in a best two of three series of matches. First, a no DQ match, followed by a first blood match, and if the score is tied up, the tiebreaker will be a Hell in a Cell match to settle things once and for all. This is WWE history in the making, and Glover is going to need to carefully consider every move in his arsenal to take down such a terrifying opponent. So in the no DQ match, I decide to stick to Glover's strengths. As a smaller wrestler, I figured my strategy needs to boil down to knowing exactly when to strike and keep my opponent guessing. It took a lot of careful planning, but eventually I think Glover found what worked for him. Now, in the first blood match, I knew I'd really have to rethink my initial strategy and think outside the box. Kane learned a lot of my tricks from the first fight, so if I was going to win this, I was going to have to shake it up and not get stuck in my usual patterns. Oh yeah, I won. And then Glover beats up Vince McMahon as a loving tribute to his favorite wrestler ever, me. And that's basically SmackDown vs. Raw. You can actually keep going with the story as each month changes up the events that happen, depending on whether or not you're trying to win a title, or defend a title, or recruit a new diva. Like I said, we'd never got Tristratus on this playthrough. But for the sake of this video, I'm just doing the one season. But it's fairly impressive to me just how much there is to this game. Overall, I really like SmackDown vs. Raw. The fighting is fun, the wrestler creation options are in-depth, the soundtrack is phenomenal, and it's really cool getting to put your own character smack dab into SmackDown. The truth is, SmackDown vs. Raw is one of the last wrestling games I ever really played, so my question to you all out there is this. Are there other wrestling games that came later that do what this game did, but maybe did it better? What are some other games where the wrestler you make gets to feel involved in a story mode like this? Who knows, maybe for my 5th year anniversary when I go back to wrestling games, I'll talk about a game one of you suggested. So before I wrap up this episode, I'd like to very quickly address what me being in China is going to mean for the channel. Ideally, nothing. I'm still hoping to do videos. I'm aiming for at least one Strain 42's views and one Demonic Compendium per month, and I might even have a special project lined up for 2019. I did only bring my PlayStation 2 over with me, so at the very least for the next year, consider me a PlayStation-only channel. I have been so lucky and so fortunate to have your support over these past three years. I could not have grown my channel without each and every one of you, and I want to say that even though I'm now on the opposite end of the earth, I am so appreciative of everything that you've done, and... Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for three wonderful years, and I'm looking forward to a good year in China and on this channel. So thank you all again for watching, and until next time, take care.